And then one more on a uh, on a different topic. The trial of Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin has begun uh, in direction to the death of George Floyd. Has the president been briefed on the developments so far? And he condemned uh, the death, certainly when it happened. Does he believe the police officer should be convicted of murder? Well, the, the president obviously doesn't weigh into um uh, he's not going to weigh into an ongoing uh, judicial uh, or a legal case. Um, he's watching it closely, um, as are many members of the administration. Uh, as you know, he himself encouraged the House to pass the bill uh, that, um, uh, and he is uh, very pleased that it did. Uh, and policing reform, in, in broadly speaking, is an issue uh, that he believes is urgent and one that he is committed to working with leaders in Congress and also taking steps as he can take on his own uh, to address. Uh, but, you know, he has spoken about, uh, he spoke about the trial and of course the the death of George, George Floyd in personal terms. And that is a reflection of how he continues to feel as he watches uh, the events unfold with the trial. It affected him personally. Um, it redoubled his commitment to address advancing racial justice. Um, that's why he signed an executive order on racial equity on his sixth day. One of the reasons why he signed a, uh, a, an executive order on racial equity on his sixth day in office. And of course, he will be watching it closely, as many people in the country will be. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Drone Tech, and today we're going to take a look at Circleback Saki's press conference and the deceptive tiptoeing both she and the reporter did on the topic of George Floyd. I know I'm not alone in the deep, deep frustration and how this story has been handled by the media and politicians. When it first happened, we were all shown a video out of context without facts and told that Floyd was an innocent man who was murdered by racist police and that this was a common everyday thing in America. For just one really cringy example, over at CNN, they straight up said that this was all the fault of, quote, white people in America. Not incumbent upon black people to stop racism, to stop this. It is incumbent upon people who hold the power in this society to help to do that, to do the heavy lifting. And guess who that is? Who is that, Chris? White people. None of these things is true, and the myth-making has led to real death and destruction. That's the truth. Our media has conjured up a conspiracy theory and has used it to cause racial division and riots. What we see here with the reporter in Saki is just straight up lies, or at the very least, misleading assumptions. Which is kind of insane because this reporter should know better. It just tells me that he's purposely covering up inconvenient details. I don't understand why they try these revisions of history because we have the internet to go back and look. When Biden gave his statement about Floyd, he didn't hold back and he made a bunch of assumptions that led to riots and death. I want to say a few words about the, the horrific killing of George Floyd in, in Minnesota. And it sends a very clear message to the black community and black lives that uh, are under threat every single day. They speak to a nation where too often just the color of your skin puts your life at risk. George Floyd's last words uh, spoke to a nation where the color of your skin dictates the safety of, in your future. I'm a white man. I think I understand, but I can't feel it. Lies! All lies! First off, he has no idea, and definitely didn't at the time, that any of this had anything to do with race. Like all Blue Anon, he lives his life in a conspiracy theory that simply isn't backed up by the data or facts. Second, he assumes that Floyd was killed by the police without the facts. He then claims that this proves that black people are being hunted down by the police. Wrong! Look at the data. 226 black people shot by police in 2020. Out of 40 million. How many of those shootings were unlawful? I don't know for sure, but if I had to guess, I'd say very few, if any. Hell, look at all the white people that were shot by police that never even made the news. Oh, but that would diminish the conspiracy theory, so no go. The fact is, we don't even know that Floyd was killed by police at all. Instead, the facts point to a different scenario. For one, using the knee to subdue somebody who's resisting arrest is taught and used by police every day. I'm not aware that it's killing people. In fact, the only real data that I found was from an NBC article citing that 44 people had been left unconscious in five years. They used it in the first place not only because he was resisting arrest, but because he was acting like a crazy person. I mean, just go and watch the footage. 
But he also had once invaded somebody's home and held a pregnant woman at gunpoint. I mean, he actually held the gun to her abdomen. He's clearly insane and violent. Also, Floyd had three times the amount of fentanyl to kill any person under any normal circumstances. The medical examiner even said that if he had been found dead in his home, they would have concluded that it was an overdose death. And most of all, there was zero physical evidence suggesting that Floyd died of asphyxiation. Just go and watch the body cam video. Floyd was telling officers that he couldn't breathe, which by the way, is a popular rallying call of the left now. But actually, he was complaining about not being able to breathe as he was being arrested. Be way before the knee. And let's not pretend like this is the first time this has happened. The media jumps on any story involving a white cop and a black suspect because it fits their narrative as long as they ignore all the details. God, I swear, these people are going to give me an aneurysm. That's all I have for this one. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.